I mean, you saw the beginning of the last business cycle, and it was not pretty. It wasn't pretty for the economy overall. It wasn't pretty for aerial investments. Give us your short synopsis of where we were and how we got to where we are. Well, as we know, that was the worst crisis since the Great, Great Depression. I think the leadership in Washington did the right things to get us back on track. And it was an extraordinary opportunity to buy bargains because so many stocks had just gotten crushed. People had given up. And, of course, it's always the best time to invest, as Warren Buffett always says, when there's maximum pessimism. And we had maximum pessimism. And inevitably, the economy came back extraordinarily strong, as we all know. But it was because we had great leadership making the right decisions. So, John, it, do we get max pessimism again in the next crisis? I think the next crisis will not be nearly as severe as the last one. Um, you know, so many people invest looking through the rearview mirror. I'm on a number of investment committees, and people are making all the plans for the next crisis, just like the last one. And I think people have been overly conservative, overly cautious, and the next one will be much more modest, and it'll be a great opportunity to buy when we do have the inevitable downturn. Uh, it, what is on your shopping list? Like, what do you need to see to, ha to, to then be interested in buying in the market when there is some kind of shakeout? Well, we love a lot of the financial services companies, uh, particularly the ones that are the fee-based companies. Uh, we think an investment banking firm like Lazard, with their international and global investments uh, arm, will do extremely well. They also have a restructuring arm that will do well in a down economy. Uh, we think of uh, companies like uh, uh, KKR. You know, private equity continues to be a great place to invest. More and more global pension funds and endowments are investing in private equity. And so companies like KKR, we think, are really, really well positioned to benefit in, during a real tough time in the economy. So, John, give us a sense of how you got to where you are today, because Ariel had a really tough time in the crisis. And now since then, and we can put some numbers up here, you're number one among 208 uh, people who are rated by Lipper. I mean, you got 23.3 percent return. You said the economy came back, but you did better than a lot of other peers did. Why? Well, what we were able to do is just remember, you know, uh, John Templeton always used to say, the great investor, buy when there's maximum pessimism. And we felt there was maximum pessimism. We talked and read about how great investors had made really good decisions during crises. And we just said, we have to lean in and But you buy. didn't buy the index. No, we didn't buy. We you, bought the so stocks. How'd you buy the ones that were going to go up more than other people were? Well, what we tried to do is stay within our circle of competence, invest in companies we knew really well, where we believed in the management teams. And our, we have a great team of analysts at Ariel that are grizzled veterans. We've been together for a long time. And so with, our, with their homework and visiting with the management teams, we found some great, great companies. So there's so much information available on the Bloomberg and elsewhere today. Yeah. How do you get an information edge? How do you get information that another investor doesn't have? Well, we think because we've built this reputation of being long-term investors, uh, folks like having us as investors. And so they return our phone calls quickly. We get our visits and go and meet with management teams. And so we were able to buy great companies like Royal Caribbean at the bottom. We knew Richard Fain, the CEO. We thought he was terrific. And we bought that company at a real bargain price. Uh, Gratian Mator at Gannett at the time. You know, media stocks were getting crushed. We were in there buying those stocks as they got done and got really, you know, downgraded. And then finally, the real estate services companies. Everyone hated real estate, but companies like Jones Lang LaSalle and C.B. Richard Ellis, they were great bargains because we could see over the horizon that real estate would come back and people would lease properties again and buy property again and, and the commercial real estate was going to be a great place to be. Uh, John, the difference also next time is going to be the massive amount of private equity money and the massive amount of leverage in the system also. Do you have more competition this time than you did uh, 10 years ago? I don't, I don't think so. I, I think that uh, most public companies have been really reasonable with their debt. They don't want to make the same mistake as last time. We think that's really, really good. So that's another reason we're so confident about the next term, uh, the next time the market re declines. We think our companies are much, much more uh, financially strong. And we think private equity acts as kind of a, a, a floor because if stocks get cheap, there's so much private equity uh, dollars out there that those companies will be able to get picked up at bargain prices and go private. 